<laughs> All right. So last week, you guys chased down um, a runaway satyr bard named Ulrin Zabis, who had <laughs> run off with a lot of townies and a lot of goods. And he led you on a merry chase of debauchery, which included, well, all of it. If it was bad, he was probably doing it. And you guys managed to rescue the townsfolk, get the stuff back, brought them back to town, threw them in lockup, and went home and spent a fairly quiet week the next week uh, moving about town. So let's talk about some of the stuff you guys did during your downtime. Now, Othig wanted to head out to Red Rock Keep and do a little reconnaissance work. Uh, to see what, what was actually going on, to see if his parents were really out there or not. And so Filbert volunteered to help him with that and do some work with him as he's his stealth game is pretty darn high when he takes on an animal form because nobody's really paying attention to birds that are supposed to be in the area flying around. Now, that does mean that Filbert has to turn into a bird that's in the area, but I think with Othig's guidance, it's pretty safe to say that that happened. So, uh, Othig, can you give me just a d20 roll to see how well things go? That's a two. <laughs> <laughs> That's Excellent a two to start out the shindig for. Um, yep. I love it. So you're, Do I get you're, to roll an advantage? <laughs> um, I, I, well, there's going to be a series of rolls here. As you get out there, uh, you're not spotted, but... There's there's I nothing. A rock, did I? No, there's nothing really for you to pick up on your first day there. Filbert's out cruising around, coming back, telling you this is what I've seen, and you don't gain any real solid information the first day. However, you do see that there is, as Mr. Mercury told you, a lot of construction going on at this keep. So make another one for me as you spend the later part of the afternoon in there. That's a seven. That's a little bit better. Um, I kind of throw these things like in the actual... <laughs> I think uh, just dropping them doesn't help me out ever. Get get new dice. You need to get new dice. New, yeah. Just change, change the color. Change, change the, the color. color. Yeah. So um, <laughs> That's obviously the solution, Adam. Yeah. Between, yeah. between what you can see from further away and what Phil's feeding you back in the information-wise, you do see that there are probably 100 or more laborers moving about this area. They are building outer walls, new towers, a very large structure up the cliff face, up to the castle itself. It's it's a major production. Give me one more. And we'll whip this one. <laughs> and that's a net one. Change the color. That is wow. a net one. Um, Good. I hope I hope all the bad rolls are out of the way for the night then. <laughs> so <laughs> here's what happens to to you. You don't find your parents. Unfortunately, you never spot your parents. You and Filbert are a little frustrated by how how this has gone, and you turn around to leave. And about twenty feet behind you, leaning against the rock, is a Red Rock agent who has been watching you watch them <laughs> oh great and he asks you if you've seen <laughs> are you gonna get killed too oh <laughs> uh, gosh i hope not if you've gotten everything you need that's what he asked me yep I'm gonna I'm gonna say no and just continue on my way. <laughs> All right, and that's how the conversation ends. He doesn't bother to pursue you. He doesn't start any trouble. He just it really just seemed like he wanted to let you know that he knew he you knows. were there. Well, wow, that's excellent and not really, but it could have gone way worse. I guess it, it could have gone way way worse. So that's that's two days for you guys spent out there taking care of this um the other five days uh what would you like to be doing um i think i had said i was gonna do crafting and try to help with like the job slash contract area so okay um, um you want five 
Yeah, you, days, you, uh, you can make five days of crafting rules, then, unless you have something specific you're going to build. So No, just working on the axe buster. Okay, cool. Um, you oh, do... take the sneaky. You do also receive a letter from your two friends who are in the military currently. Um, you receive a letter from Skog and Raki. Raki. Um, it just says, get the kegs ready. Oh, all right. So well, I, I will, I will do that. There's where um, that's at. What's the what's the crafting modifier? Oh, for me it's what do we say eight? Right? Yeah, it'd be your skill plus your profic your your ability modifier plus your proficiency, and then if you have expertise, it's your proficiency twice. So that's what you got. Let's see, Thanic, you are gonna spend some time making an actual weapon this week. Yeah. Anything else that you want to do? Um, other than just, uh, like I had said, practicing with, um, with, uh, with, uh, Phil on recognizing spells, um, mm -hmm. just kind of, um, watching him, um, perform spells as, as well as he said he was just kind of, kind of be Phil about it, but, um. But yeah, that was that was most of it. Just making that making that um, morning star and uh, and uh, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, how long would it take to make the morning star? Um, well, it'll depend on on what you're doing with it. If you're making just a basic morning star, a, yeah. a day's worth of work. If you're making one that isn't quite as large, so it's versatile instead of a two-handed weapon. Um, that's that's a little bit more. Oh, I was thinking it. I was thinking it to be just a one-handed, like a like a mace, but does piercing. Okay, yeah. Then that that's that's a one day one day's or project. Or a warhammer. A warhammer with. With so piercing. So it's a one-handed. Yeah, one d eight with piercing. Sure. That that's a that's one day's worth of crafting points, and then I would say, I don't know how much something like that costs, but. I think it's like I mean I don't it's 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 not in the PHP because it's not a weapon. Uh, what's a warhammer cost? I don't know, fifteen gold maybe. Yeah, I, like I think it's fifteen. Let's find out. Warhammer. War horse. Fifteen. War. Fifteen. So yeah, you can spend fifteen of your crafting points to make a normal everyday average uh, morning star. So you now have a mace that does piercing. And then, let's see, you spend, say, another day with Phil, doing Phil stuff, and then you can have five days worth of research points as well, unless you want to do something else inside of there. Um, no, that was it. So you said 15 points for the, 15 crafting points for that? And yep. then I would use, how many, what, five more days? Yeah, you'd have five days to roll. Okay. Um, um, during this time, uh, do you want to check the dead drop that you set up? Um, yeah, actually, uh, unless Mav is, has other plans, I'll go, I'll go check it. Um, well, you're, you're the least busy because Mav is incapacitated for at least two days. Oh, right, right, yeah, so I'll so, go check it. I'll go check it. I just, that's why I figured it'd, make, it'd probably make sense for you to do that. You, um, find that the gold you left is gone and there is a letter there and you open it up and it says the following, Red Rock Keep adding many barracks. Outer walls, towers. Additionally, large underground complex with full smithies and forges, laying up vast amount of provisions. You said barracks, towers, walls. I said and underground. That. I'll post it in Discord. Large underground po complex with smithies and forges, laying up provisions. Oh, Othig, by the way, while you were out, you were able to verify Mr. Mercury's household claims, and they are true. Does seem like he lives in a small, small domicile with his family not too far from the Red Rock Keep area. You want to do another two gold for that news? Or should we have more since it's... Uh, one second. Um, uh, two gold. You said two gold for. Uh... You gave him two gold last time. Yeah. Um. 
Yeah, we'll give him two gold. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you drop another two in there, and moving on. Where is that gold coming out of, by the way? Like, where, I like... take it out of the guild expenses. Okay. Which you can see in our notes tracker. Okay. All right. Don't so... forget to add 25 gold to your stockpile from the last. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now you can move on, Mike. Let's see. I'm trying to see what else is going on here. Um, let's move on to Mav, then. Mav, you rest for two days, and you spend two days doing guild work. Um, you come across two possible jobs that you think would be great for the B team, and Phil volunteers to go with them this week. So that's where he'll be, is, is off with that group. Um, since nothing else is popping up for you guys, he's getting antsy, and he needs a job. So there seems to be a bandit camp not too far um, northeast of town, about halfway between the fork that where you head to the Dimitropolis farm and then you head east towards the Red Rock Holdings. About halfway between there, there's some, been some bandit activity that nobody's put a bounty up for them yet, but townsfolk are talking about. And there's also a, um, a farm hand that comes into town and talks about how their homestead was burned. And their, that homestead was pretty much directly south of Red Rock Keep a Good Ways. If you're looking at is it the maps. within the territory that Red Rock was trying to acquire? It is in the territory that the Red Rocks are trying to acquire. So you can send them to one of those two things, and then you guys can start to plan for taking the other one. Where is... I mean, Mav's all for hunting and some ore, but... or bandits. Um... Oh. However, Homestead's about there, and then where that bump in the road is, is where the bandits have been active. The Homestead is the arrow? Yeah, Homestead's the arrow. Yeah. And where the the bandits are military encampment? No, 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 no. Other side. I will. Oh, sorry. Bandits are operating somewhere in that area. They're hitting that chunk of the road. That's probably too big of a circle. Does our B team have the gumption for the investigation of the? You think so? With with Grummy on the scene, most likely. Um, she's 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 good at picking up stuff and tracking and all that type of things and that includes two rogues and then a fighter for protection and with Phil along that's a that's a pretty decent sized amount of people to find out what's going on I the, the, the bandit camp for us so we're going to go we're going to go south of Red Rock okay no yeah okay yeah bandit. So, is that what you were saying no, I you were was saying, saying that the team should handle the farm, the homestead and we take care of the bandits, but we can do either. Yeah, I don't no, we're saying, we're, we're saying the same thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're saying the same thing. All right. So is as you're getting ready to do that, is there anything else you'd like to do with your downtime? Um, you said I had three days of... Yep, uh, three days points. of crafting. Oh, there is something else you stumble across while you're out there. So you can roll for your crafting whenever you want. Um, oh, Mike, by the way, I rolled 96 for crafting for the five days. Cool. Awesome. I saw it pop up. Let's see here. Let me pop up the Illinois map so I can show you where this is at. Um, because you were nosing around about possible buildings for the guild, you came across this. There's an old Iron Fist estate that was sold off by Khalid not too terribly long after the trouble for him started. It is just south of the bazaar there. Should be marked on your map. That has gone up for sale again, but it suffered pretty greatly during the earthquake. The reason it hasn't been repaired yet is because nobody was using it. So it was an abandoned building at this point in time. 
you're not quite sure who bought it, but there is a notice that it's going to auction in the near future, and bids begin at 2,000 gold. <laughs> Holy cow. Where is this? Yeah, on the Illinois map, it is that southern okay. building right there. Yep, that guy. Oh, it's the old Iron Fist estate. Okay. It's the, it's the old one that was in town. Uh, sorry. I, if you said that, I, I didn't hear it. Oh, sorry. Asking around, you found out that Khalid used to live there and has since moved out to his family's holding out, out of town. So. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Would there be a monthly payment if we bought that? For you, housing? you might be able to arrange uh, a loan in town through the bankers. Okay. So, but it is it is coming available in the near future. There isn't a date on the auction yet, but it it's letting everybody know that it's coming. Mav would like to talk to the bank beforehand to see if taking if if the bandits would be causing them any problems with anybody that they associate with. Okay. Um, and then see if we can use that as some negotiation power for acquiring a loan. Sure. Uh, you ask around, and so far in town, nobody of note has been harassed by the bandits. It sounds like they're just picking off lone travelers and commoners who don't look well protected. But anybody who's a traveling merchant, anybody with protection has been left alone. Unless you guys got anything else you want to do with your downtime this week, that should wrap that up then. All right. Okay, so knowing knowing that they are only attacking people who they seem to be alone, is there a cart that we can borrow? I was just going to say, can I put on a just a little thing and have you guys like hide under a cloth or something? Yeah, just hide under some potatoes. Yeah, make a make a yeah surprise. Okay. Get the... All right. Well, before you start making those plans, let let's shift gears a little bit here. We'll bring our downtime section to a close, and we'll do our opening cutscene. So here it comes. There is only dim magical light illuminating the library. Its intangible source is somewhere up near the high ceilings. A small creature scuttles through the shadows, standing. Somewhat erect, but moving more like a small ape. When it stops moving, it becomes nearly impossible to distinguish its presence in the room. The door creaks open, and another creature slips into the room. And then another. And another. There's the sound of spell work, and then everything goes dark, followed by the sound of bleeding goats. <laughs> so, you guys begin to think about investigating this bandit camp and several things begin to happen in town you're asking around about getting a cart and maybe some bags of vegetables or potatoes or whatever's available to you know throw into it to make it look like you have something and a huge detachment of soldiers begins to move through town uh, they seem to be heading through the center area and then out through the north are they what? Kren? Yes, they are Kren soldiers. Okay, so do we know where, like, where they'd be moving from and to? Um, you you got a feeling they're probably coming up from the military camp to the south, and but you don't quite know where they're going. They are exiting the town to the north, but that exit is, you know, it it goes a long way out of town before it decides to go either west or east. I'm going to run to the inn and grab a couple ales, bring them out to the men to hydrate them. <laughs> um, yeah, they, uh, the officers claim them. <laughs> they thank you for your service and remind you that soldiers on duty should probably not be getting drunk. Oh, whoa, whoa, you're a dwarf. Who said drunk? <laughs> well, they're not all dwarves. Most of them are humans. I, I suppose they're not. <laughs> hey, most of them are are weak, lily-livered, no-constitution humans. Uh, <laughs> uh, I love it. Um, can I ask them where they're off to? They are yeah, off to the north, uh, northwest of Marisi, which is the town on the on the 
northern edge of Angel Lake, where uh, they believe they have discovered a large rebel encampment, and they're going to deal with it. Good luck. They thank you for that, and they march on. The entire procession of soldiery through town takes about a half an hour of people. There's maybe a thousand men in this column. It's a big deal. And so coming up right at the end of them is you see a young dwarf woman. She doesn't look like she's part of the contingent, but she was following with them. And she's speaking to uh, a soldier that you guys recognize. You've seen him in town a few times, even though you don't know his name. You've seen him in and out of the inn. He's a younger officer, just a lieutenant. On, and uh, he points over at you and she thanks him and she comes Heading over, it's a young dwarf lady. She's carrying a staff, but using it more like Phil would, like a spear. I mean, she's carrying a spear, but using it more like Phil would, like a staff. Uh, she has a large book at her side that Thanik would immediately recognize as a spell book. She's probably about 45, 50 dwarf years, dark, thick, dark, curly hair, um, dark skinned. And she inter- she comes running over to you guys and bows and asks... If you're the Southern Sevens. Yes. She introduces herself as Mara Lee, and she is the apprentice to the wizard Despina, whose tower is to the south of town a ways. And she says she has a bit of a problem and was told you might be able to help. Yeah, what's the problem? She says there... There is a portal that has opened up in the wizard's tower. She used an emergency warding spell to contain it, but something was trying to get through. She immediately went to the military encampment, which isn't far from the tower at all, and asked for aid as is normal in Krent society from the military, but they were loading up to head north on the march and refused her and she asked if there was anybody else available and this lieutenant pointed her in your direction so we're going to open a portal to the unknown and cause a van rectum issue no she says it's already open she she needs help closing it okay heard that one poor lady Okay, I would say that we could go do this. Deal with this. Um, she she says fantastic. She doesn't have any money though. However, she does have um, access to an enchantment scroll, which could enchant one of your weapons into a basic magical weapon, which gives that weapon a about a five hundred gold piece value. Nice. So she's okay. she's willing to barter that. Is this at the at the Mage's Tower? Yes. The, the the portal is in the Mage's Tower. May I have a pull out a contract? Okay. Um, she quickly reads it over. Um, you watch how quick she reads it, Mav, and you're a little impressed. Most of the dwarves you've met can obviously read, but they don't read nearly as quickly as she does. She challenges you on a few points of it. Basically amounting to like contingency things where she just makes sure, gets some clarification on things. To make sure you're not trying to loophole anything. Which is all the more impressive. Um, because that tells you that she actually read it. So is your contract pretty fair and standard? You're not going for loophole type things? It's pretty fair and standard. Alright. Well, so, so this is fair and standard mean there is loopholes? <laughs> <laughs> no. Typical if, Wall Street uh, contract. Yeah. Okay. What was the What was the saving throw for? Just checking. It was the ability check. Oh, all right. So, yeah, so she signs her name to it. She signs Marilee Vestrali. And she turns around and asks if there's anything you need to take care of in town or if you can, we can head out right away. Did we take a contract to go deal with the bandits? or No, the, the so bandits... It was just something that we yep. heard. It was just rumors. Okay. You had heard rumors of, of okay. both of those events. Okay. So we were planning on going, but... In, we were, we were going to be proactive about it, but... Yeah, depending on how long okay. this takes, maybe we'll get a chance to still go out there. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. So is there anything you guys want to take care of before you head out of town? Um, I don't think, I don't think so. Anything else. Was that, uh, sorry, was the, the thing that she's bartering, the magic enchantment, was that something that she's giving up front, or is that reward collection after? That is collection after. Uh, okay. Do we, uh, what are we doing for healing? Are we good in that department? Just you? Yeah, yeah we have, uh, yeah. <clears throat> I got a healer kit. I got some heals. Okay. All right. All right. So you guys, you have um, about a four-hour trip ahead of you to Despina's Tower, south of town. Probably closer to six, actually, because you have to head up into the hills. There's not an easy way to get to it. The wizard keeps himself fairly... Um, <laughs> Tony keeps himself fairly isolated, or keeps herself. Despina is a, a lady. And let's see. Is there anything you, else you want to talk to her about as you're... Uh, just, I would I would just be talking to her about um, magic. Yeah, about like, about the about the, the portal. Like, has anything come out of it? Like, what, what should we be expecting? That kind of stuff. Okay. Um, make a persuasion check. Mm. Cool. I'm assuming you don't have for. Uh, I'm not trained in that. No. Proficient in that? Yep. No. Okay. Um, then I won't assist you. She tells you that uh, what happened with the portal is there was an experiment that re- went awry. And it opened up this this very strange portal, something completely unexpected, especially because there there wasn't any uh, portal style magic being used when it happened. And a strange humanoid like creature attempted to come through it, and it was shrouded in magic and then was pulled back into it. At that time, she activated the emergency ward in the practice room. And uh, then just tendrils of magic continued to try and work their way out of it, um, poking at the ward, but that's as far as they got. And let's see, there was an insight check rolled on that as well. And so we, uh, she seems to be telling the truth, Mav, but she might not be telling you everything. <laughs> Can I roll persuasion to see if she would tell me anything else? Yeah, sure. Especially because you picked up on insight that she might be hiding something. Nope. Nothing yeah. else. No, she's pretty tight-lipped about it. Okay. Hmm. All right. So, you guys start to get closer to the tower, unless there's anything else you'd like to do on, on the trip down here. I don't nope. think so. No one say anything to Tony, please. <laughs> that was really mean, but that was going to be good. That was super mean. All those rolls were just so terrible. That's just great. Yeah. Well, I mean, what else could happen? I mean. Yeah. He's he's thoroughly convinced now that it, it's, it's gone bad. Yeah. Real bad. Yep. So you guys get to the tower she takes you up the the path that kind of does some switchbacks up the cliff she could have taken you along the other way but um she says this way is faster because you don't have to pass through as much of the hedge maze and you get to the outside of the tower and you see it there is a huge like six foot tall thorny hedge maze surrounding this tower for maybe an acre in every direction but um oh gosh you guys (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm trolling the absent player. Um, but taking the switch back up cuts cuts that time down substantially. She tells you not to touch the hedge. <laughs> Definitely not going to touch the hedge. Yeah. Definitely heed that advice wholeheartedly. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably super pissed. <laughs> Ah, uh, you guys. So she gets you. You get closer to the tower, and um, 
Adam, make a perception check. No, no, don't make a perception check. You can see it. Make an arcana check for me. Or is anybody else trained in arcana? Oh, that's terrible. I'm not trained yet. <laughs> not this dwarf. <laughs> okay. Uh, Matt. I'm actually trained in arcana. Okay. Um... I was going to let Thanic roll at, at advantage, um, but we'll just take your, your second roll as yeah, advantage. An 18 over a 4. That's a much yes, better roll. <laughs> Thanic, um, you and Mav recognize this almost immediately. There is... The tower is covered by a mana ooze. It is something that is really uncommon, but you're taught about. It's... It's an ooze that normally exists only in the weave, in the spaces between the planes. Okay. Um, and for whatever reason, this thing is covering the tower. It's not necessarily dangerous, but it is. it can be difficult to pass. Because it, it can, with enough exposure, it can, like most oozes, damage weapons and other objects. So I'll ask her, was this always here, or did this show up after the portal? She looks terrified. Um, so she's never seen this? She's never seen this, and this was not here when she left. Alright. She's like, I, I didn't, I, I, I was, I wasn't, I was only gone a day. I, this shouldn't be here. This is, this is bad. <laughs> Okay, you guys, stop it. Because <laughs> we need to concentrate on the real game, not the one you're making up. <laughs> it's a choose-your-own-adventure book. <laughs> we can make it whatever we want. <laughs> oh, no, you're going to tell them, aren't you? No, I'm not. <laughs> Yay. Way to go, Andy. You got us all in trouble. <laughs> Dude, that's even more convincing. <laughs> of course it's more convincing. I'm not going to ruin this. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. All right. I really hope he does listen to this one now. <laughs> okay, so do we, do we have an idea of how to get through this? You said we can do it carefully. You can do it carefully, and you know it, if you use regular weapons on this, you're going to have to clean them pretty quickly, um, or they're going to start to dissolve. The, a mana ooze can dissolve even magical weapons, but it takes longer. If casters touch it, it can absorb their spells. It, it basically eats them. It eats magical power. Okay. It's like yeah. So well, so how do we get through this thing? Um, she doesn't know. She's she's a caster. She's not ever encountered one of these. She knows about them a little bit, yeah. about the same level that you know. Um, but she never expected to encounter one. I'm going to go look around the entirety of the tower. Is it? Yeah entirely present it does from where you can get to through the maze without getting lost in the hedge maze yes it looks entirely present it looks like it is Top some to bottom yep. all the way around yep does she have a way to contact uh uh what's, what's the uh yeah Despina? yeah uh she 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 does but she looks at you and says i would rather not I was hoping we could oh, solve this problem before yeah. Yeah. she returns. She's not here. Gotcha. There's your punchline. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would ask if they have a back door into this joint. She says, uh, n well, sort of, but I would rather not use teleportation magic through the ooze. I don't know what would happen. What about, can you contact, who, who, is there anybody else in the tower? No. Any students? Anybody? Nope. So the tower's empty? Yes. That we know of, at least. 
Yes. It, well, it's devoid of any, well, maybe, I don't, I can't say what would come through the portal would be malicious, but it's, we will find no further allies in the tower. Yeah, that's fine. We shouldn't expect any, at least. Um, I have no idea. Uh, well, we can hack at it with the weapons. I mean, that's about all we can do. Yeah. I mean, but it takes up the whole tower. Right? We That's... just need an entry into the door. We don't need the whole tower cleared of it. We just need to be able to get into the front door. Oh, I guess I was understanding that it was like trying to envelop everything. It was like constantly trying to envelop everything. It looks more like it was poured on top of this thing, on top of the tower, and it's oozing down it. So, kind of it's enveloping everything, but it doesn't seem to be doing it intentionally. A mana ooze isn't really very sentient. Much okay, so less like, than normal oozes. Yeah, so like our regular weapons would be fine. Correct, but you just got to make sure you can clean them off rather quickly. You don't want to leave well, this stuff on overnight. It'll well, eat it. Well, we clean it off with. Find some A cloth, rag. something, anything really. Whatever we clean it off with is going to get dissolved, right? Correct. So you wouldn't want to clean it off with your nice clothes. Okay, so... I have some comms or some vestments. I'd be willing to give common clothes. Well, um, Marilee said there, there there, would be plenty of things inside once we get in that we could use to, yeah. to clean that up our weapons nice. with. I mean, Question. we live here. There's bedding and... I suppose, yeah. Okay. Would... This is an odd question... I think I might know this spell, yeah. but would press the digitation clean this off? She she says no because the mana ooze would would absorb the the spell cast on it. Okay. Yeah, right. and and not only absorb it, but it would probably start to grow. So you okay. wouldn't want to use magic to deal with this. Okay. If we lit a torch, would that burn it off? Um, with the Arcana checks between you guys, you don't know how a mana ooze will respond to fire. You know that a lot of oozes, fire's kind of an iffy proposition. Like, some like, of them, it doesn't hurt them at all. There's one out there that it actually causes exponential growth to. Oh, okay. Um, alright, so let's get the town on these things, then. Let's try to just clear... Yeah. Sure. Clear clear a uh, pathway for us. All right, so you t start taking your weapons and you, you, you're starting to use them to kind of flush the, the the ooze aside so you can get to the door. It's not overly thick, so make some attack rolls. You can even make them at advantage because you're taking your time to, to push stuff out of the way. How many do you want? We'll just start with one each. Oh, that's pretty good. Like I said, all the bad rolls out of the way first. Yeah. Right. All right. Mav just looks at Thanic and says, like this. I know. I know. Yeah. Um, I don't want to touch it. So that's th three out of really four really good rolls. So um, you guys managed to clear away the, the door frame in the, in the handle of the door. You do believe... That you could you could probably open the door now, without too much hassle. You are watching the ooze kind of start to pseudopod out at you now. When you started this, it wasn't responding very much, but the ooze that hit the ground is now sliding back in, and it's almost like it's figured out what you're trying to do. So you can continue to try and clear it off some more, or you can go in. Open up the door. Who wants to uh, open let's... the door? Don't uh, don't break down to the door though. Yeah, let's let's. I'll open it first, but then as soon as it's open, Mav, you run through as quickly as you can without trying Agreed. to touch anything. Um, Agreed. Yeah, and then the rest of us. Oh, and then her, the caster, she can go. She can go in next. Okay. So. Because if if you and I, if if we get stuff on us, we we we'll, should be okay. Because we don't have any spell slots to lose. Correct. All right. So um, you throw open the door. Make a constitution saving throw as you touch this handle that was covered in the ooze. 
Oh my that's, gosh. That's not so good. So you take a you take a point of damage as it acid damage as it starts to burn at your hand a little bit. But you throw open the door and Mav make a dexterity save at advantage as you run through here. Mayor Lee does as well. It's not quite like that, but it's definitely not good for you. <laughs> um, so you, you, you two, those two, um, the casters run through without a problem at all. You guys get to make your dexterity saving throws normal. As the ooze is now, it does look like it's reaching out to touch you. So we make dex? Dex saves. Okay. Um, I would I attempt to like hit it with the staff. Okay. If possible. I don't know if there's enough time. Probably not. Othig's going to get acided up a little bit here, too. So, nope, just another one point of damage as it brushes across your face as you run through. And then as you get through, Merrily casts a spell on the doors and prestidigitates them shut from the other side and slam shut. And you can see some residual ooze getting through the cracks a little bit, but for the most part, it just pulls itself back out. Okay. So... You run into the room, and it's dark in here. It's completely dark in here. And she says, that's really strange. And then you hear goats. You hear the sound of bleeding goats. Okay. What does a bleeding goat sound like? Bleating. Not a bleeding. <laughs> that's bleat. <laughs> with the T is the so technical for noise for a goat. For goats. Yep. Um, is there... I assume this is supposed to be lit up with magic. She says, "Yep, it is." Okay, well, so let's get. Yeah, uh, we've got. Some I mean, if forces. we need to see, we're all dwarves, so we have dark vision. You do. That's right. You do all have dark vision. I always forget that. So you guys can see into the tower a little bit, all of you, um, and you see standing around the stairs some very strange creatures, things that you've never seen before but Mary Lee is familiar with and she says oh no Kelki and as she says that they turn and start to throw things at you guys and we're going to need to roll initiative what you're looking at inside of this tower is creatures that if you took a baboon sized monkey so it's got a tail so it's not baboon's a bad illustration so if you took a a large monkey and slapped a goat's head on it, that's what you'd have. They're adorned with some crude jewelry, copper chains and things like that, but they're carrying different magical implements. And one of them is running up the stairs at the center of this tower, dragging a bag of stuff. And there's like bottles and books falling out of this bag. And it's just making freaking out goat sounds as it runs up the stairs. And these things attack you so let's get into it all right holy cow there's a lot of them there's four of them relax oh okay okay <laughs> i just saw like my my uh my uh oh phil's not here combat tracker just explode <laughs> i need to get remove philip did you roll mav no boom nice. There we go. Setting the pace. We will put those two there and you guys here as you ran I was in. The last one to come in, so yep. I'm not sure if that matters. Yeah, that's why I put you and Thanic in the back. Okay. We'll get you all in squares now, proper squares. Oh, it's two people wide. I thought it was only one at first, so I was yeah. going to. All right. So let's see. Kalki 2 is going to go first. And which one is that? That's this guy over here. And he points a wand at Mav, and you watch as stringy spider webs come flying out of it. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw as you are covered in spider webs. All of us or just him? Just Mav. Okay. Uh, you do manage to get out of the way of them. You sidestep them, and the entire area where you were just standing is now completely super sticky terrain. This one, oh, that's this guy. He continues to run up the stairs and disappears around the corner. And Mav, it's now your turn. Which one shot at me? Uh, the one you targeted, two. Do they all have wands? 
Um, one of them's carrying the. Let's see. Number one is carrying a bottle, and number four also has a wand. Okay. Number one. Number one. It's getting shot. <laughs> you blast number one, and as you nail him with that guiding bolt, the bottle he's holding explodes, and he's just covered in in um, alchemist's fire, and he starts to burn <laughs> and dies. Thanic. Um, I'm gonna run over at number four. Okay. Do remember that that circle will. You don't think you should go in it, so. I move through Morali. That's half speed, right? Yep. Yep. So yeah, so ten, fifteen, twenty. 20 oh yeah, you yeah. can you can get there. Yep. Um, and I'm gonna swing at him with the Morning Star. Well, that's gonna hit him. And I hit him. <clears throat> For four points of damage. And he is uh, wounded. It? No, I'm sorry. It is. <laughs> Alright. That's anything else? Uh no, that's it. Alright. Othig. Um, I'm gonna move through as well, except I want to um also dash and go straight upstairs at the one that broke away. Okay. He uh, said one broke away, right? Yep. He he disappeared up the stairs. Yeah, I'm going after him. Okay. Um, the stairs are going to be quite long. You you this chamber here is at least thirty feet tall. So just so you know, if you if you chase after him, you are probably going to be chasing him for a bit and be quite distanced That's from the group. That's fine. I okay. feel like time is of the essence for some reason. So. All right, so Othig, let's put you on the stairs then. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, let's see. Anyway, you're just ready with that one. Othig, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw as you run up the stairs. I gave you a oh, dexterity that's good. check last that's, time. Too. That's good. Whatever. Um. It was close enough, anyways, the check and the throw. Uh, there is grease all over these oh. stairs. It has turned this area into difficult terrain, and it will slow you down quite a bit. If Had you slipped in it, you might have tumbled down these stairs. So, let's see. That's going to bring up number four, who is going to open his mouth and breathe poison out of it. Um, Thanik, I need you to make a constitution saving throw. He's with poison? Yes. So that's just advantage? It's at advantage. That's really good. It's 21. So you will save against it and take half damage. And then half again. You will take one point of poison damage as this thing breathes on you. And then it shrieks and it turns around and it's shaking its butt at you and it's banging on the ground. Is that and an opportunity attack? No, it's not, but it, it, <laughs> it is moving over to here, though. It's not staying where it okay. was. So, let's see. And Mary Lee is going to cast Flame Strike at that thing. And she will hit it for five points of damage, and that is going to be just enough to knock it unconscious. This one runs up after Othig and attempts to grapple Othig. It tries to grab you around the legs and pull you down into the grease. Jeez. And so, Othig, I'm going to need an acrobatics or an athletics check from you to try and avoid this thing, and it will be at disadvantage because you're standing on greased stairs. Fifteen. That's enough. That is enough by one point. So you have... You have tied the Kalki as it tries to grab you, and it shrieks at you. A big, like, goat mouth opened up. and Can I, can I hit it? Yes, because it came into your space. So yes. you, you can definitely take an attack swing at it. That's uh, number three. Wait, which one? Two. Number two. Okay. Four is unconscious. 
That'll hit it. Oh, you clobber it. Oh, you I didn't even need to use my butt sword. You didn't. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't have gotten to on an opportunity attack anyways. So. Oh, okay. Because you use your reaction. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you wallop it. It comes running up the stairs. It goes to grab you. It, you, it, you avoid it, and then you just whap at it, and the thing goes tumbling back down the stairs. So, um, what do you guys want to do? Othig's already trying to make his way up the stairs. Everybody else is down there. Uh, anything you want to do, or do you want to... Guys, want to head up the stairs, or? Um, I mean, I kind of want to ask her what's on this floor. Yeah. Um, she says it's mostly meeting meeting quarters over to the to the west. There's some chambers on the east side of the tower, but they're only accessible through magical means. And we need to go that, further up into the tower. Go up. We should also assume that any magical means are not working at the moment. Yes. Well. Like, if, she, if, if if there's an area that's locked off or barriered off, we should assume that it's not accessible. Yeah. No, I mean, like, that it is accessible. Oh, sure. Like, it, like this has opened it up? Yeah. Okay. Dep- depending, on, depending on what she means by it's only ma- uh, accessible by magical means. Like, if it's accessible through teleportation, then that's not going to work. But if it's uh, an area that's... Magically like, locked or something like that. Yeah. Um, she says it is... M- most areas of the tower are accessible. Sensitive areas are accessible through magical teleportation effects or locking doors. Um, she says hopefully they're still working or else this, there's nothing we can do. I'll we'll figure it out. So, all right, you guys run up the stairs and you get to the second floor, which is right above where we just were. If you move up on your map there a little bit, I can sync the view too. And uh, you see several Kalkis um, running around this area, and they run through that door to the south. Excuse me. Um, That door? Yep. Okay, not the big double door. Correct. She says that door goes outside to to the terrace. Um, that door goes to the Master Despina's chambers. And um, they all just, well, how many of them just went in there? It was hard to tell, but there was a gaggle of them that ran in there. Let's go, but be careful about any kind of traps like grease or something. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Does it look like the uh, Can we search for traps? Well, does it look like the tracks that I would have been following continue up anymore? No, the the patch of grease, the, the grease that were on the footprints through it, it looks like whatever was running up the stairs dumped a oil of slipperiness potion on the stairs, which creates the grease spell when you dump it. Oh, okay. So that's that's your best guess as to what happened. All right, so you're going in there, checking for traps, making sure that that they haven't left any other surprises for you. Um, and so because you're doing so, when you open up that door, you do not set off the potion or the, the bottle of alchemist fire that was set up above the doorway. So, And you can yes. hear them all in the next room. It sounds like they're chanting. Beyond okay. the curtain, if we, there. If we didn't set up, set off the, uh, set off the trap that just had a bottle of alchemist fire, does that mean we get the bottle of alchemist? It does mean you can grab the bottle of alchemist fire. Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Mav. Yeah. Um, can we sneakily go forward towards the chanting? You sure can. So you open up the next room, and this room is kind of like a sitting room. There's a table in here and things like that. This is his bedroom. These creatures, there's seven, eight of them in the room. They have arranged um, several different sorts of magical implement items, like, you know, basic stick wands and orbs and things like that, around the bed, and they're capering around on this wizard's bed, bleeding and making goat noises and things like that. And then they all start to clap. What do you guys want to do? 
and and Meryl Lee says we need out. we need to stop them. I'm I'm throwing the alchemist fire onto the bed. All right, let's roll initiative to see what happens. I feel like this is this is like in uh, Captain America where you know someone chucks a like a grenade at him and he just bats it away with his shield. Like we just did that with yeah. the alchemist fire. Like, yeah. it's like it was supposed to fall on us and we just grabbed it and like whipped it back. All right, so multiple of the Kalkis are going to go first before you guys, and here's what happens. There's about four or five of them in the room before that, and they finish their ritual, and suddenly there's 13 of them in the room. And and Marilee goes, no, 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 and she's like almost sobbing as they just start to scramble up the walls, and they're crawling out the windows, and they're... They're, they're going through like small cracks and hiding under the bed and doing all sorts of things. You see some of them fade out of existence. And so let's see. All of these guys who get to go first are going to disappear. That's great. They're, they're scooting through your legs. You can each make an attack of opportunity on, on let's see, I will leave two of them in here. I'll bring one back if you manage to kill them all as they try and squeeze past you. And they are squeezing. Uh, is it a disadvantage on, on the... Like, or can we see them? Yeah, you can see them as the ones that are trying to run past you. Does 11 hit? Uh, let me pop open their armor class. Nope. Okay, I guess. 18 will hit. Ooh, with the morning star. Roll that on number four. Oh, that's nice. That's going to kill that one. That's fine. So number four goes down. And then Marilee will take her spear out and try and stab that other one as it goes past as well. And that's a seven plus two. Nope, she's going to miss as well. So that one disappears. Mav, you're up. There are two left in the room at the moment. I will put them on the map, and you guys are in the doorway. Well, I suppose... Hey, he's wounded. <laughs> nice. You zap him a little bit. All right, so there's that. And it is going to... This is this is the one with the web wand, and so it aims at Thanic, and it shoots its wand at you. Um, no, it, it, this one doesn't. I... This one has a wand. What? Is he shooting the web wand? Yes, he is. Can I absorb the wand? You can absorb a wand. I would like to absorb the wand. All right. Web is a, I believe it's a level one spell. Let me double check. Nope, it's a level two spell. So... Okay. All right, so it blasts that out. You absorb it. It's mad, and it is going to attempt to run underneath you guys. So you guys can make a tax of opportunity at this guy if you want as he runs past. Because it is the top of the round, so you do get them all back. Oh, I thought it was on their turn. Yeah, my, it is on your turn. So Mav would be the only one who could make it. You, are, Mav's correct. Sorry, guys. Sorry. And actually, I already used my reaction, so I couldn't use it. Yep, that's true. Okay, so he is going to squeeze... Can what's her name? Can what's her name? She, no, she used hers as well. Oh, okay. Yep. So, let's see. It can get to there. And that was Kalki 3. Thanik, you're up. Um, I will, since... Hmm. Do you guys think you can get Kalki 3? Probably. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna block the doorway, so Okay. Um Kelki 
one is not in a square, but that's fine. Oh, sorry. That's fine. I'll forgive you. Oh no! Missed! Yep, definitely a miss. Key <laughs> <Can> one? <laughs> Please. Um, and that's it. One is going to drink a potion and grow quite a bit bigger. And then it is going to attempt to stab Thanuk with its dagger. 21. I'm guessing that. Oh, man. Yep. And it is going to stab you for six points of damage. Thanks. Othig, you're up. Uh, It's going to take an attack of opportunity. It sure will. Um, Do you still want me to go after it? Don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. In that case, I'll target number one. Nice. 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 All right. Just enough damage to put it down. And then I will use my movement to block the door. Okay. Is that enough to, if it tries to go past me again, take an opportunity attack? Yes, you'll be able to... Uh, not opportunity attack, but when it enters my sphere of influence? No, it's it's too close to the door for that. You're already, okay. It's already in your... Both are a reaction, though, aren't they? So yeah, yeah so I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, it really doesn't matter. Either. Yep. All right, so that's going to be Mary Lee's turn then, and she's going to firebolt at that one. That will hit for nice seven points of damage she blasts it that thing does not look like it's doing so hot as it it's looking around now it's looking for a different way out of the room and it looks like it is beginning to concentrate on a spell mav you're up oh in that case oh no i am going to miss Miss with the guiding bolt. All right. And then I'm going to move. I'm going to go hide in shame. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go stand in the corner, look at the wall. I'm putting myself in timeout. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, it pops up. It disappears and pops up over here. And then it makes a beeline for the stairs. And it's going to start to run up the stairs. Oh, that crosses my path to hit it, doesn't it? It does no, leave your no. square of influence. But it doesn't. So I can hit it? Yes, you can make your attack on it. Wait, how? Excellent. Because he's got a 10 foot reach. Because of yeah, my but... range. Yeah. It popped up over oh, here. I guess. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see, I see, I see. Yep. Oh, Nat 20. Oh, nice. All right. I was thinking that you meant when he teleported out, he left your range. Oh, no. Uh, I was like, what? D-E-D. No. D-E-D nice. D indeed. Nice. So you wallop on that sucker, and it dies. What would you guys like to do? Um, oh, is that in the envelope? Well, okay. We basically have a tower to clear now, right? Because there's like 20 of them out of the loose. There would be 11 left. Marilee would tell you that um, they run in packs of 13. And they, what they do is they collect magical items She's in, in implements. It doesn't even have to be anything that necessarily has magical power. It just needs to look magical. Children's toys, anything. They don't have a lot of power in and of themselves. But they're very... She doesn't want to use the word powerful. They're very chaotic ritual casters. She says, are you familiar with wild magic? Somewhat. I think like, it would be somewhat. Thanuk, would, you would be. Would fey, yeah. fey magic be considered wild magic? No, she said wild magic is, is a form of magic that empowers some sorcerers, and when they cast spells, there's a chance that side effects happen. And they can be extraordinarily <laughs> bad side effects. I would assume that chaos magic is like, problematic for the weave. Yes. It'd be pretty high up on, on a weave guardian's list of this is stuff that hurts people. 
Yeah, okay. What's the Brissy time? She says that's what the rituals do, and she says they will be trying to gather in another place and conduct more rituals, so we don't have to f necessarily chase them all over the tower, we just have to figure out where they went to next. Well, well why did they pick here? Yeah, she would probably know better than anyone where else in the tower we could probably go. She, she starts to debate. She's like, well, we know that one was trying to go upstairs, so they're not in my room, which is the other chamber on this floor. Um, up there, there's a lot of sealed rooms unless they've activated the teleportation chamber. Well, let's assume that they have. Sounds like it would be a good place to go. Yeah. Okay. Um, so she'll lead you further up the tower. There is, as you go up the tower, I'll share this little room with you here. On the, what is the third floor, you see this room. And it's basically a an area where there's magic runes all around it. And she sa and as you're running up the stairs, she says, this is, this is how we get into the library and, and the alchemy chambers. Um, but those are arcane locked, and it doesn't look like the doors are open, so they didn't make their way into there. Okay. And then she will go up to the fourth floor, which is a room entirely covered in arcane runes. And they are all in here running around, um, setting up a ritual. And the runes on the floor as they're setting up are spinning in different directions, it looks like they're trying to line them up. Oh, okay. And she's like, "We have to, we have to stop them from lining them up, or they could they could go anywhere else in the tower, even down to the to the summoning chambers in the in the vaults." And let's see. Let's get these guys on here. set them up around the room they're kind of just scattered everywhere around the room doing crazy like half monkey half goat things and... oops that's the one we want right there uh, Kelky 6 is way off are we supposed to see him Oh, yes you are. Thank you. I thought I had a, all of them on there. Alright, so if you guys want to re-roll initiative as we've entered into a new combat. Those are great rolls, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I always get that sweet low roll initiative. Alright. So that's going to bring up Kalki's 9 here. Where's that one at? Number 9. Where are, you? Where are you? There it is. So it's over here and it is going to... What's it going to do? It is going to throw a bottle over here and it is going to explode in this area. And I need dexterity saving throws from you guys as fire shoots out of it from Mav and Merrily and Othig, you're outside of it. Oh, okay. It's all prepared to roll that. Too. Uh, so she's going to take full damage. Mav, you're going to take half. So she's going to take six, and Mav, you're going to take four fire damage. If she took six, why do I take four? I rolled two different good. dice. Oh, okay. Yep. Gotcha. I'm on board again. And then it is her turn. She is going to definitely step out of that. Over to there. Let me get some of these guys in squares. Let's see, she is going to begin casting a spell, and she is going to cast... 
actually. She's going to go over here. And she's going to cast Burning Hands. And those three are going to need to make deck saves. One in front will save. Oops, too many dice. I'll just subtract one. That's fine. Eight and seven are going to go down. And the one in front of her saved for half. And that is 13. Okay. That's how it's their turn. Thanik, can you make a constitution saving throw for me? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, that one points a wand at you, and your eyes start to go dark, but you manage to um, shake it off. You almost went blind. Oh, no. Yep. Yeah. Let's see. 11. Othig. This one is going to make a blast. A beam of magical light shoots out of its hands, and your armor class is 16, right? Othig? Yep. I, yep. Yeah, I shook my head, yes. Okay. Um, Andy, I can't hear you. Were you saying something? Arcana checked to see what level spell. Oh, it's a cantrip. Okay. Um, but it goes wide, and you watch as the blast hits the, the stone behind you, and a couple of pieces of stone flake off of it. And it looks like you'd all be for well, Othig wouldn't be familiar with it. The others of you would realize that it shot an Eldritch Blast at you. That's... Like, how much damage did I take? You didn't. You didn't get hit by it. It missed. Oh, oh okay. Uh, let's see. Twelve. Where's twelve? That's that guy over there. That one's gonna attack Fanic again, and it's going to run over here and breathe poison on you. So I need that Constitution saving throw from you. You'll take two points of poison damage from that thing. That's quarter. Yeah, I already I already did all the math for you. Jeez. Sorry, did you say one for me too? Nope, just on Thanic. The one in front okay. of Mary Lee is going to attack her with its dagger, and she's going to deflect it with her staff. Six. Six is going to continue conducting its ritual. That one's going to continue with the ritual as well. Thanik, you're up. Which one? Ten? Ten. Where's ten? It's to your northeast. Um, I will take the opportunity attack from twelve. Okay. And go... Um, attack ten. Sounds um, good. Oh, come on. Um, I'm going to use... What's that thing called? Action Surge? Yes, thank you. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no! Unfortunately, um, you missed both times. Yeah, okay. Well, that's nice. That's it. All right. Let's see. This guy, number two, where is he at? He's on a beam, too, so he is continuing the ritual. Othig, you're up. 10 and 2 are both doing rituals? And 6. And 6. 10, 2, and 6. Straight south, straight east, and northwest. Got it. Okay. So... Try to get 2. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So I'll move right there. Target 2. I'll put the ritual casters sideways. Oh, cool. Thank you. Um, I will action surge. Oh, come wow, on. same come exact on. thing. You guys. Same exact thing. Oh, oh, man, that sucks. You've wasted right. your action, action surges. 
Mav, you're yeah. up. Mav is going to relocate to here. Okay. And T is going to attempt to do what the other two could not. <laughs> That'll hit. And down it goes. No, don't hit that one. Oh. Right. Isn't that the one I was trying to take care of? Which one would... Six was, six was right by you. I was going to take care of ten still. That's fine. Oh. It's fine. Well, I thought you moved down there so you could attack six. No, I moved down here for other reasons. That's fine. Oh, it's fine. okay. All right, back to the top. Nine. Where's where's my buddy nine? Seeing that ten goes down, nine is going to begin ritual casting. And then Mary Lee is up. She is going to cast Firebolt at the one in front of her, and it's unfortunately going to go wide. So five now begins casting. Ritually, there are... Four ritual casting Kalkis in the on the board right now, and that's so lame. Like a spell can go wide when you're five feet away from it. I mean, but a missive is a miss. So. Well, it's not always it goes wide. Sometimes you know they put up a shield and block it, or they step yeah. out of the way of the blast. It's or like, do you just cast it badly and it just fizzles out? Yeah, there could be that too. Let's see, eleven. That's one of the ones. That one's going to run down here between Thanic and Merrily, and it's going to attempt to... What's it going to do? It be, it, Thanic, it looks like it's trying to cast a spell, but Merrily told you that these things can't actually cast spells. It doesn't look like he's... <sighs> If he looks like he's trying to cast a spell, can I interrupt him? You can certainly try. Um, oh, I didn't actually get that. Hold on. That's just the... It's an attack roll. Is it attack roll or is it a... Is it a... Athletics check roll? I don't remember that? what we made it. I thought it was an attack roll. Maybe it's an athletics check. They're both the same, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Maybe that's why I keep getting him confused. All right, it's casting a spell, and you whap its hands with 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 your weapon. Um, roll roll damage now. Okay. <laughs> so you you would have hit it for three damage if it were a regular attack. Instead, you delay whatever it was doing by three rounds, and you watch as all these papers start to shoot up out of its pouches, like they're scroll work papers, but. It, you you don't know what it was doing. You feel like maybe it was trying to activate a scroll, but it w didn't do it very well. And now it is it has <laughs> delayed whatever it was whatever it was doing. So twelve is up, and it is going to it quaffs a potion, and it looks like its skin hardens quite a bit, and then it is going to take an attack at Othig and miss thirteen is I believe casting or maybe not nope that's the one right in front of Merrily it is going it's gonna shoot over here and pull a gem out of its pocket and aim it at her and a blast of magical energy is gonna shoot through her and looks like she's casting um Agronires or Scorcher or is that nope Scorching which one shoots through people Scorching Ray is the three... Then it's Agronar's or Scorcher. It's a beam of, of magical energy at the second level that's shooting through people. I may absorb it. Alright. So you go ahead and you absorb that other one. You have absorbed a second level spell then. So... What's happening to you right now? You've used your... I, I've used my pool, yeah. and I've used my hit dice, and so I'm about to be exhausted if I do it ever, anymore. Okay. 
All right. So it's it's mad and it starts banging the gem into its its hand and it's it's kind of pounding it on the floor and then it just goats at it. <laughs> goats at it. <laughs> it's really upset. Six I know is ritual casting. Yep. So Thanic, you're up. Um. All right. I'll try to take down eleven. Um. Is Nice, max damage. Nice. Nice. Um, and then, um, is that area still on fire? Yes, the ground is on fire. Um, I'll just ask Morelli if she needs help with thirteen. Uh, she shrugs, says, "I don't think so." Okay, then I will. You should take care of number 12. He's not casting anything. I can't do anything about you should, him. Though. You should... Okay. I mean, I, I just go stand by him is what I would do. I'll go right there. Can I go right there? 5, 10, 15, 20, 20. Yeah, I can go right there. Okay. Right there. All right, so that That's brings it. up two who is casting. And... Oh, thing. Can I... Can I... Can I interrupt that? Try to interrupt that? I can do it twice. Uh, no, you cannot. Okay. It's a it's a different kind of procedure. That's fine. Othig swings wide right over the head of the Kalki. Anything else? No, I I can't. All right. You can use your you can use your butt staff. No, he has to hit with it, I believe. Yeah, you, oh, have, to, you have to hit, don't you? Yeah. I thought, I thought you just needed to make a No, attack. you just need to make a melee attack. You don't need to hit. Okay. Gosh, I keep getting this messed up like every week. That's all right. It's still kind of new. Okay, hang on. Hit <laughs> Mav scooching over. That's going to hit him. Donk. Hey, for Max, I'll take it. Yeah, no yeah. kidding. All right. Mav, you're up that interrupt him it does not okay Mav is going to use the healing kit and heal himself in a 15 foot radius <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, and then he explodes <laughs> <laughs> oh Boom! And goes on patches. <laughs> Did you really only have 12 hit points? I absorbed the spells. He okay. he takes oh, hit hit point damage when he does that. So Okay, okay. So they have to make a saving throw and they can take half damage. Uh Charisma thirteen. Charisma thirteen. Alright, three of them are gonna save, but two is already hurt, so it's gonna die. Um, and let's see, nine dies. And five and six take half damage. Oh, 14, eight, seven. All right, now is Marilee's turn and she is going to shoot a firebolt at number 6 and attempt to get it out of the way as well and it is going to caper and duck out of the way which brings up 5 who let's see d20 where's he at on his ritual he has sped up his casting of the ritual 12 is going to Try to Eldritch Bell last Othig and will just barely miss Othig. Othig, it, this magical energy hits you right in the center of your armor and it's just, it's really intense and then it goes off and it just looks at you and goes, <laughs> <laughs> and there's, there's no damage. That happens. Let's see, 13. This one is 
it doesn't have any of its fun things left so it is just going to attempt to stab merrily and we'll miss her and six yeah. Okay. Six finishes the ritual and the gravity goes out of the room. <laughs> Everybody disconnects from the floor and begins floating around the room. Um, <laughs> let's see here. It's like having a bunch of mini wands of wonder running around. Oh, Thig, you float two squares this way. Fanic, you float two squares. That way, the Kalki floats two squares this way. This one floats into the fire, but the fire's on the ground now. <laughs> it looks really nervous. Oh, this is getting roasted. <laughs> it's, it's above it, but it's it's definitely hot. It smells like it smells like euros. Down. This oh. one <laughs> goes this way. This one goes this way, and Marilee goes this way. Oops. If, can I? Does that? Uh, does that enter my range if it's floating? Like, no, it it's forced movement. How does that work? Forced movement okay. does not provoke attacks of opportunity. That's oh, yep. Okay. Yep, yep. So they're all laughing and cackling like goats would. And Thanak, you're up now. What would you like to do? You're floating off the ground, kind of tumbling end over end at the moment. Can uh, kill number five. Well, that's my question. Can I move? Like how? Like. You can attempt to move. I know how if, I'm going to move. If I attempt to move, will that use my action? Uh, it uses your bonus action. That's fine. I will... Um, I will attempt to kill... Jeez. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to go over to number 12. Okay. Make do I get there? I need you to make an acrobatics check. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. <laughs> you attempt to push off um from the, the wall there and you end up over here. Jeez. Okay, well, Okay, well, I can't. Am I at disadvantage to throw? To yes. Throw right now? Because you are all kinds of like. Yeah. Okay. Willy nilly. Then I am going to attempt to throw a hand axe at five since I will already be at disadvantage. All right. Oh, you almost get him. And he kind of just rolls over and it goes right underneath him. Oh. <laughs> Real close. Their AC is 14. Oh, that sucks. That's, that's it. Oh, thing. Do I... Can I... I can make an attack from here. Would it still be a disadvantage? You can. You have to make an athletic acrobatics check first. Even if I'm not moving? Even if you're not moving. Okay. And if you fail it, then you're at disadvantage. If you succeed it, then you're not. Sorry, did you say athletics or acrobatics? Acrobatics. This is definitely acrobatics, as you try to right oh, yourself okay. from tumbling around the room. Also, before you do anything else, um, that's not enough. It's close. Oh. Close. Um, your brother, or your cousin, is at the moment dying. Right, you went over. You're not stable, correct, Andy? Correct. I am. I am out. Yeah, I'm down. He is, is making death saves. He will be. I will be. This is the first round, right? <laughs> this will be. This will be his first. His first death. Yes. Yeah, correct. Death save that he's about to make next. Okay. <laughs> so this is the first round of death saves. Yes. That was my bonus action. That is your bonus action to to stabilize yourself. 
Okay, well, I couldn't do that, so I'd be attacking at disadvantage. Correct. I don't have anything to heal you with. You don't have any potions? No. That's what I asked about. No, none of us could afford them. Oh, well, that's true, I guess. I thought you gave us the potion. Did we use it? We got, po we got potions? We had potions when we were commoners. We had mm. one potion. We each oh, had but we lost them. Nope. Yeah, oh, we, we lost, lost them. You're right. That's happened. right. That's right, yeah. You guys yeah, didn't have, have one when you come I don't back. have one in my inventory, so... You can make a medicine check to stabilize somebody. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I will next round. <laughs> uh, really feel like we've got to get these things down, so I'm going to try to I mean, that's Andy, so he's going to net 20 it. That's actually what I was thinking as well. So Watch the yeah. net one and... <laughs> no! We'll see that I really have until next round. Yeah. Um. Alright, so I'll attack at this point. Stupid goats. <laughs> oh, whoops, hang on. Oh, oh, oh that's there gonna you go. miss. There you go. So you swing at it and you tumble around and you just nope. Alright, Mav is successful in his first death saving throw. No twenty, but it'll do. No Mav survives this round. Twenty. Alright, Marilee is she makes her acrobatics check. Pushes off the floor and drifts over to Mav and gives him a minor healing potion. <laughs> Woo! You get three hit points back. The best of us who isn't even a part of us. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. That, that, that's her tone. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Uh, every, literally anything in the channel today is going to be her tone. <laughs> Oh. All right, uh, it's her turn. These guys now, they all start like making goat noises and cackling, and you see the symbols on the, the floor are continuing to move around, and they find, they line up into a position, and the goats disappear. Ugh. Boop. Merrily does not disappear. <laughs> um... And you guys are all still floating around. What? Merely studying the floor. She's trying to figure out where they went. Great. She should definitely do that. Anyone that can help her should. Okay. Um, uh, you guys have a moment to try and do some stuff. What would you like to do? I would like to vomit. <laughs> <laughs> Mav would like to figure out where they went. Um, you... You don't know what the symbols here mean. You you understand what some of these symbols are. They're definitely teleportation symbols, things of that nature. Um, several of them, though, as they're spinning around, you can tell they're not active. Like, there's no magical power left in them. Others are, you know, doing it. And you kind of see a pattern, and it looks like the ones that are still active are short-range. It looks like all of the long-range ones are, are inactive at the moment. Um, so... Yeah. Go oh, I was going to say, for movement's sake, just so I don't know if it's going to be like hard to try or take up too much time trying to get out of here, but I just throw my rope to someone and see if I could throw my grappling hook like to something that I can pull us around with. Oh, yeah, you can definitely do something like that. Like if we're trying to, yeah, if we're trying to get out of here or whatever, yep. I don't know like what the range, if it's just this floor, if it's like the whole tower now or what. Oh, you you have no idea until you yeah. go someplace else whether or not this is the whole tower or not. That's why I'm just going to use the grappling hook as much as I need to to get around. Yeah, so you chuck it over by the stairs and, and you, you, you wrap it around the the edge of the stairs and you can you, you toss the rope to other people and you guys kind of all finagle and pull yourself over to the same area of the stairs and then merrily begins um a ritual incantation so she's like this is gonna take take me a minute uh and the symbols on the floor begin to spin around she's like i have to reset it and then reline it back up and we'll be headed down actually it's fairly useful we're headed to where we need to go to where the rift is can i read any of these runes are they like are they written in draconic 
Yeah, they're 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 basic magical ruins. Um, you feel like some of them are are self crafted to designate that they most likely match something on the somewhere else in the in the in tower. the in the tower. Okay. That's the that's the feeling you get from from these ruins. All right. Is there anything else you guys want to do while she's doing this? Um, no, that's going to take like 10 minutes. She that says it's, it's definitely going to take a bit. Um, are we all going to stay together? Are we all, like, should we look around a little bit while she's doing that um i can try to bring us around yeah she says sure. you shouldn't leave the floor okay all right then let's just stay here um i'll use uh second wind okay and um and that's it oh i'm gonna can i go get my axe that i threw yeah uh, please make an acrobatics check for me. Let's see if I throw up. Let's see how bad this gets. Oh, very oh. nice. You've gotten kind of used to the. Uh, now that I've the, emptied my stomach. The I'm zero fine. gravity, and you uh, push off, and yeah. Go and grab your axe. It is also floating around the room. Yeah. So you, it's a little bit of a merry chase to get the axe, but you do manage to get it. And then, let's see, Andy's on the phone, so we'll give him a second to pop back. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Goats, man. Coats. <laughs> <laughs> Totes. Totes, goats. Love the goats. The goats are very mischievous. Yeah, definitely. Is this the adolescent mayhem? <laughs> <laughs> no, this, this isn't so much adolescent mayhem. A little bit, though, of just causing problems to cause problems. Yeah, just causing. Nah, I was just baiting yeah. Tony when he was like, "Oh, it'll be this." I was like, "Oh, yeah, I was just baiting him." Yeah. Kind of like, kind of like we are tonight. <laughs> Gosh. He's gonna be like, "You jerks." Yeah. I hope the recording is okay. I've never seen it do this before, but I keep getting a message, and it only lasts for a few seconds, saying that the recording is overloaded, and then it goes back so i don't know if it's just having a problem buffering through things so certain parts of it might be a little skippy yeah, weird. yeah it's not using a lot of my cpu usually when i'm recording it uses a good chunk of my cpu and i'm only i'm barely at 20 so it should be fine i never think to go and look at the recordings anymore you used to post them but you don't do that anymore. yeah i do oh do you what mm -hmm. channel the amplisordo games channel on youtube it's got its own playlist. Seven sevens. They're all up there. The whole commoner oh, campaign no. is up there. I meant in Discord. You don't post the links in Discord. Well, I just post the generic link to the to the list. To the channel. Okay, yeah, I should just I should just leave that up as a tab. Because I always forget to go and check it. Yeah. Not that I need to, but I I listen to them every week just so that I can stay connected and remember well what was going on. So, Sorry oh, about yeah. that. No, not a problem. So Domino sent the wrong people. Oh. Win win for me. Heathens. Give them the pizza coming. Hey. Yeah. Very nice. Perfect. So what happens is Marilee can finishes her ritual. Um Andy, was there anything else Mav would want to do during this time? He got about ten minutes before. No. Okay. Um he just sealed himself, check out. Perfect. All right, so she finishes her ritual, and she's like, okay, here we go. And the entire room shifts. You guys are teleported 
to another room that is filled with smoke. And you can hear the the Kalki. Um, it sounds like, again, they are up to some sort of mischievous ritual of some kind or another. And as the smoke begins to clear... Let's see. Oh, let me reveal a room here. Um, you see that they're actually on the ceiling. Um, there is still no gravity. They're all holding hands in the ceiling, and they finish a ritual. They're and, like skydivers. And, and start cackling. Um, you guys might as well roll initiative again. As, oh, shoot. I got to do something here real quick. Are they going to form one big Kalki? <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they don't form one big Kalki. But something does happen. They do form... Adam, Adam thinks that's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Just the visual of it. A portal, a portal does appear between them, and something large does begin to climb out of it. A large Kelki? It is. It's a super Kelki. It is. It's like a Power Ranger Kelki. Yeah. Sort of. It's a it's a large goat, um, man. It doesn't look like the Kelkis. It doesn't move like them. It doesn't have that ape quality to it that the Kelkis have. This is an actual goat man, and it just looks over at you guys and fire begins to shoot out of its eyes and it's like a purplish colored fire this it's a kelki gundam this this thing kind of appears to be like a fully magical creature like it it doesn't it doesn't strike you guys as a fey creature or even as a fiend this feels more like a magical construct okay um is there access to the outside in this there is like a window. There are there's um illusionary windows to the outside, but there aren't any real windows. You can see outside, but you can't actually go through the window. You're not gonna break a window, are you? I mean, isn't That's they gonna right. ruin the tower because all the ooze is gonna come in? So the goat man is on the ground. It it flips around and lands on the ground and it begins to like it looks like it's gonna charge you guys. And so we need to roll initiative again. I'm keeping my seventeen. Yeah, we just rolled. We okay. Just roll again. No, you, you don't need to roll again if you just rolled so <laughs> Can we roll again? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Alright, Kalki five. That's who's up first here. It it's is like going to crawl across the ceiling, which is just out of Othig's reach, and then push itself down to the ground towards Mav, and it is going to attempt to dagger Mav. And that's a 12? Mm -hmm. Nice. For six points of damage. Ow! Othig, you're up. Is there... Is there anything in my reach? The goat and Kalki 5. Okay, well, I'll target Kalki 5. I need to do athletics first? Yes, acrobatics. Acrobatics. That is just enough. You yes. feel like the, the anti-gravity in this room is not quite as tumbly as it was at the epicenter of it. So you get a hold of it with a 13. Ooh. Unfortunately, you miss with your secondary swing. And are you moving or are you doing anything else? Um, will I provoke opportunity if I move? You're not sure. I'm lining these guys up a little bit better. No, I'm just going to stay put then. I'll let things come to me for now. Okay. All right. Wait, if he was in my reach to attack, you said, oh, but you said I wouldn't get my, uh... Correct. Um, you don't get your butt swing unless something's in reach. 
no, but did, I get, did I get to do my uh, pull arm attack for him entering my reach? No, because it's forced movement. He, yeah. Oh, you mean when movement. he came down? No, you could do that. Yeah. You could definitely do that. Okay. All right. Great. Sorry, I thought you were talking about the goat man. No, 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 no. That'll Sweet. hit him. Thanks, buddy. Uh, that is enough. Yeah, so man. Your second attack, your your actual attack would have killed him then. Yes. Very nice. Thanic. Fantastic. Um, first thing is an acrobatics check. Yep. That's enough. Um, can I... <laughs> Is everybody on the ceiling, or, or just the... The Kalkis are on the ceiling, the goat man is on the floor. Um, can I just push off the wall and torpedo the goat man? <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, but I mean, you're not going to damage him at all. Oh, come on. You can bump straight just, into him, though. Just grapple him. <laughs> I got him, guys. I got him. <clears throat> All right, Partially you, resisted. you oh, wail on him with that morning star, but you feel like it just did not do as much damage as you'd hoped it would do. Yeah. All right, Kalki twelve is going to move over to here. Uh, with the rest of my, can I get a my can I get a pack of opportunity? Or is, is how high is the ceiling? It, no, it's it's almost twenty feet tall. Oh, okay. So, um, I'm just gonna let uh, the group know that um, Mav should focus on killing the goat man. It's magic. Um, when we w would have wiped our weapons or whatever off, do we have those things with us, or are they disintegrating? Do you have what? Well, whatever like we would have wiped our. Yeah, you, whatever. We you have wiped never our... wiped your weapons off. You started fighting yeah. Kalkis and chasing them around the tower right away. Oh yeah, that's right. But you have hit you have hit plenty of creatures to where the damage on your weapons would be quite as severe. But you never okay. did wipe them off. Got it. Did the did, is there any residue on my my morning star? There my quarter staff sure does. Yep. Mav's quarter staff definitely has residue on it. There's some on there. It's I mean, did it get on the goat man? <laughs> Um, no, it, uh, there's not enough to get on the goat man. You've been beating on Kalkis and swinging that thing around. All right, yeah. So that guy's going to go over to here. He's going to pull out a bottle, and he's going to chuck it at Othig. And let's see. That's a nat 20. Woo! With a potion bottle that actually does no damage. But it's just... <laughs> You look up at him as he's cruising across the ceiling, and he and, and he looks at you, and he pulls out this little vial, and he whips it straight at your face, and it bonks you, like, right between the eyes. It opens up, and grease splatters everywhere. And you guys are all now covered in grease, making your acrobatics checks at disadvantage now, as you are... It means it's more difficult to grapple us, guys. It is very difficult to grapple you, and... Like, anything you touch now, it'll be slippery. So to push off of something or to do something, it'll be very difficult now. Are you saying, like, that radius right there? Yep. Well, it's on you, so we don't need a radius. Okay. Let's see. 13 is going to go back here to this corner. And it's going to pull out a wand and shoot magic missiles at you guys. At Marilee. Nope. Nope. Okay. Well, it is a level, level one magic missile. Nah. Okay. Get hit her. Oh! <laughs> that was a good. Like three, four. That was a good magic missile. She is going to take seventeen points of damage from oh, that. From a gosh. level one. <laughs> How many um, missiles come out at level one? Isn't it only two? It's four. No, it's level three. One hole, look out. It's three. So she she will take thirteen points of damage. Either way, it is still enough to put her on the ground. Full. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. 
Somebody grab a healing potion from her. And it is her turn. So, death saving throw for Mary Lee. Nat 20! Yay! Yay! She rolls over and she's mad. She's <laughs> real mad. And she's going to cast Burning Hands again. Upwards at the goat face and to those two jokers in the back. So, she's going to move to here. And they will have to make saving throws. Do, do, do. Uh, goat man's going to save. And the other two are not. So... The two Kalkis in the back are vaporized. Nice. Dang. Let me just make sure I'm deleting the right one. 13 and 6. He's going to take full damage, but half a full... Uh, Okay. Mav, you're up. Uh, Mav is going to attempt to go up. Okay. Nope. Nope. <laughs> That's a net one. You go to push off of the floor and your feet just flip out from underneath you and you are now tumbling in a random direction. Six. Doink. Okay, well, while there, I'm going to shoot the stroker. All right. Oh, that's a nice roll. 16. Yeah. Then that will be my turn. All right. So it is the goat man's turn, and it leans forward and goes to headbutt Thanic. And Thanic will block it. With his morning star, you get your shield out right now too, right? Yep. yep. Yeah, you go ahead and you block it with your morning star and shield, and then it'll turn around and attempt to claw at you, but you will deflect that as well. And I need an intelligent saving throw as it stops and stares at you. You get real faint for just a moment. You feel like you might pass out as this thing stares at you. And your eyes get a little crooked, and then they snap Aren't back together, and you're okay. Aren't we supposed to stare at goats? Isn't that how it goes? Maybe. Not goats stare back. Uh, he, he, he tried to hit you with his fainting goat power, and it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, because he practices it all the time. Othig, you're up. Uh, okay. Well, try to move first, I guess. Oh nope. no, that's another nat one. Let's, Jeez. Well, let's where do you see. want to put me? Let's find out where you go to. You don't drift too far, you only drift off over to here, into this corner. Bump. Mm. Um, to about that. Uh, crossbow attack. All right. Still at disadvantage? It is at disadvantage. Uh, all right. Well, I'll target the cup to 12 then. Oh, so oh, sad. That is Drop the nat 20. All right. That's my turn. All right. Thanic. If I'm not moving, do I still need to do that? Or you I... do. Because it, okay. it determines whether or not you get advantage or disadvantage on your check. That'll do it. You're in a good position as you kind of move around a little bit after getting hit twice but not taking any damage. And go ahead and wail on the goat. Can I can I, um, take my maul out for this attack? You sure can. Um, that's you... it, and I'll fix my AC for the round. Okay. Alright, so Kalki. He is going to run downstairs. Boink! Mary Lee is 
going to cast Magic Missile of her own. And that will hit that guy for 12 points of damage. He is now heavily wounded. Mav, you're up. Mav, we can't hear you. You're muted. Mav is going to have it told to death. It will fail its saving throw. Nice. And take six points of damage. And then... Oh, I need to make a... Do I need to make a athletic check for that? Nope. Because it's not... It doesn't have an attack roll to it. It's got a saving okay. throw. If you want to move, you do. do I am going to attempt to move. Why is my athletics a negative one? It's oh, acrobatics that you want anyways. It is. Oh, that's okay. no good. So, um... Jeez, guys. Wait, why did you... Why did you... I'm greased. Oh, we all are. Yeah. I forgot about that. Mav, you do manage to float off this way, though. I don't know if that's the hey, way you wanted to go. that's where I was going, so... <laughs> it's kind of what I thought. Um, you can see some stairs going down quickly, and then it looks like they turn to the south. And you see no sign of the Kalki. Okay. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> all right, it's the goat's attack. And the goat does not seem to be affected by the anti-gravity field at all. So it is going to attempt to headbutt Thanok again. 17. Oh, it's just my AC that's so irritating. So I need a constitution saving throw from you. Nice. You take nine damage, um, but you just take the headbutt and you just stare right back at this goat. And then it's going to attempt to claw at you. And it will miss that. And let me see if it gets its fainting power back. It does not. Oh, think you're up. All right. going to try to get in range. Advantage, That'll do it. Advantage. You're good. Sweet. 13's the DC. So I'll move right there. I should say should say regular or disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, oh, unfortunately, your gosh. swing is going to go wide. And your backswing will hit, though. All right, again, it partially right. resists the damage. Thanik, you're up. Back with the maul again. Oh, lame. So oh. lame. That's All it. right. You man. Can't you do... wait till I get more attacks. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, same. It, it's coming. Let's see. Mary Lee is what she got left. She's going to cast another magic missile. That seemed to be very effective. Magic missile was very effective. <laughs> it was super effective. <laughs> All right. The goat man is not looking so great. Mav, you're up. Did you not want it? That's what I figured. I dropped a piece and she like jumped off the jumped. A replacement pizza arrived. Yeah, I kind of figured when Zoe went crazy, that's Yelped. what it was. More pizza. Oh, my turn? Yes, your turn, sir. Uh, sorry, I will toll it at again. All right. It will fail its saving throw. And... Excellent! Yeah. Yes! You kill the goat man. The bell goes off in the background, the gong rings, and the goat man dissipates into it magical energy. Did someone say it gong? It is totally a gong. That is yeah, it totally is a gong. Yeah, of course it's a gong. Um, Mary Lee leans against the wall and she says, Ow! Um, I'm going to go help her. Oh, yeah. Nope. I got a healer's kit. Nice. War gong. 
you want to use that on me as well? I do. And oh, then... those are at disadvantage. We still had a Kalki escape, correct? Yeah. You did. So I rolled a four and a six. So if you could put me in a random direction, please. <laughs> it's the never-ending battle. And then another four. <laughs> Dang. Um. No, oh, no. Aren't we moving around with the grappling hook and the ropes? And not stuff right now. You're not. Actually, four four what? puts you. You float right past Othig, so he could probably Othig make a Gosh. make a check to catch him as he floats yeah. past. Uh, Give me your halberd. <laughs> what up? Yeah. Nope. Don't grab on that. <laughs> No, sorry, buddy. Nope. Mav ends up over here. To come over. And then Good two, three. two. You kind of bump your no, way along this six. wall here a couple of times. This is like the three stooges. And you do, man. you do manage to make your way over there. It's a good thing nobody was seriously injured in that fight. Tie that guy off finally. Sheesh. All right, you patch Mary Lee up pretty good, and mm. Othig pretty good too. Arthanic pretty good too. All right, what do you guys want to do? Head down the stairs, I'm guessing. Down the stairs. Can we tie Follow each other up Kelsey. while we're? You can tie so, each other up. Let's do that. <laughs> tie each other up. <laughs> so we're we're. If we need to get to somebody, we can just yes. pull their, their clothes. Tie, tie off of each other, yes. All right. I would agree. All right, so you guys head down the stairs, and when you get to the bottom of the stairs, you the grease has worn off, and you do find that, for the most part, gravity has been restored. Uh, it's yes. Everything is like lighter walking. right now, but at least if you move, you will get back to the Earth. Um, you kind of got moon gravity going on here. Nice. And Marilee nice. says it's the, the, the testing experiment chambers just ahead now. We not far through the cavern here. Um, but keep your eyes open for that Kalki. Which, which way? This way. Like she thinks that's where they're going. Yeah, well, she looks over and sees that the other two doors are still closed and their arcane wards are still swirling on them. Okay. So she's pretty certain it didn't go that way. So she points Got this it. way. And... Are we still looking to kill the 13, or is that not really a thing? Oh, she says if we don't kill it, it will summon another... It will summon 13 more. That's, that's yeah. what I was saying. Did we, did, is, that, is there only one left? There is only one left. She says also maybe... Sometimes they teleport away to fill the gap. Um, we might get lucky. And as you get closer down here to this room, there is a purplish-reddish light pouring out of it, and there is a Kalki hanging out on the far side of that circle, and in the middle of that circle is a, a cylinder of what appears to be magical energy, and it is pushing itself against the the walls of of the ward and she's like oh it's much bigger than it was what is the ward the the, the vortex the weave vortex oh this is where she yes in the first place this yep. is where everything went wrong this is where everything went wrong and the kalki is right trying to push its way inside it is feeling around the outside edges of the ward. Uh, you don't quite know what it's doing, but you can see it through there. So let's put you guys oh boy. over here. And what are you going to want to do? Shoot it. Shoot it. <laughs> Kill it with fire. Yeah, can I make a, an advanced attack? Like, can we get the drop on it with like a... Can I... Yeah, can we get the drop? Well, let's roll initiative then. Because that's worked out so well for us. It's not so good. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, hey Mike, I don't know the answer to this. Is do, do the Weave Guardians are they in any kind of position of authority? No, it's you're kind of like a separate little club all your own. Okay. Um. So Merrily. Oh no, the Weave Vortex is on the combat tracker. <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? She she gets she goes to get in here and a tendril of magic lashes out and whaps at her and it is it is gonna miss her but it it tried to strike her and she's gonna scoot down to here and cast flame strike at the Kalki. oh that's an at one that's terrible let's roll a recovery Okay, she does. And let's... Mav, you're up. Well, I'm going to attempt to move to here. Okay, it is going to lash out at you as you enter its space. And it will miss you, I'm guessing, with a 10. 10 misses you. No, nope, it'll hit me. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Something. Well, that's... A low roll, thankfully. Um, you are only going to take four points of damage. <laughs> was that 2d8 you rolled? It was. Gosh. Maybe you should not be there. <laughs> <Too late. laughs> um, let's see. It is... Uh, no, I, I... Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, now it's his turn. <laughs> All right. Let's see. It is its turn. It doesn't have a whole lot left it can do. And so it is going to shoot an Eldritch Blast at Mav. That, that is a four on the dice. So, Mav, you're oh. safe. Oh, thing, you're up. Oh, boy. Um... Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just going to dash in, too. All right. It's going to miss you. You, know, you could hit it. You've got I 10 reach, right? right there. Yeah, and can I hit it from here? If you I can. Pull, right? Yeah. Great. Then I'm going to do so. I love the idea of a four-foot dwarf with a... Ten foot oh yeah, me too. Me too. Love it. <laughs> Thing is great. Best idea. It's real. It's realistically like us using a fifteen foot weapon. Yeah. It's like Cloud and the Buster Sword. Yeah, maybe. All right, so you whack yeah. it, but you do not manage to bring it down. Thanic. No. Not with a one. Can I see it through that? Orb thing. I think he said we could before. You can see it through there. Um, yeah. So here's my question. If I throw a hand axe at him, will it hit the, the vortex or will it... I think it's going to hit the vortex, dude. He's like feeling around it. You, you did... Remember the... Yeah. You, you do feel like the vortex is a pretty substantial his area. description... His description when we came in was he was like scooting around trying to like grab at it like it was a cylinder. Mm -hmm. Um bad things could happen if you hit the vortex and it breaks open. Yeah, I wanna move We're right gonna here. Die. I wanna move right here, but I would be moving right there. Will that through that No, you're right good. There? You can scooch through there. Um and then I'll throw a axe and kill. Oh, it's going to hit him. Yeah, you will. Yeah, you'll throw an axe. Boom. Kill it. Boom. All right, so you take out the Kalki right as he was getting ready to, to pull something out of his belt, and he kind of just tips over and tumbles back onto the ground dead. And let's see. You get attacked as you enter in this space as well. Uh, 13 plus. 17 does not hit you or does hit you? It, uh, no, I have my shield up, so it doesn't. Okay. Yeah, I kind of figured. All right, so you, you whap it away. And here's what happens next. Marilee says, Bad vortex, bad. Okay, we need to close the weave rift. Um, 
And she's like, Thanuk, you, you, who has training in the arcane? Um, I. You're not proficient I, in it, I, but you do have training in it. Yeah, I, I haven't really completed training, I guess. I don't think it's just going to stare at the ground and kick the dust. <laughs> she's like, well, <laughs> you're going to have to do, you're going to have to help me with the ritual. And Othig, you're going to have to protect us if that thing starts attacking. Oh, yeah, I'm all about that. Okay. So um, she points around the room, and it doesn't seem to be attacking as you're getting into position. It only seemed to attack as you entered its space. Okay. So she puts you guys around. All right. And so... I need you guys to make arcana checks like you're making attack rolls against it. And Othig, it is going to go to attack them, and if you don't hit it, it hits one of them. Okay. So, just make an arcana check? Yep. <laughs> uh, and let's see, Merrily. Oh, she did terrible, too. Um, so you want me to roll one attack roll for each of them, then? Uh, no. It is going to go to attack Thanic, so you can you can reach this one, and you can attempt to attack it, and then you can move after that if you want. Oh no, oh, man. no, you do not, you don't hit it. So, the well, then eight... can I? Oh, go ahead. Can I can I ask them to kind of at least come a lot? Well, actually, Mav like come like five feet closer so if something strikes out at him he can't he has to they have to stay in this position they have to stay in those positions okay, yep got it so um you can move closer to him though so you can defend him if you want instead of the other two the the point is you have to get on a side so you can you can you have to pick which two to defend pick got defend it. defend yeah. map and... i'm gonna defend the squishies okay all right so you can we'll put you yep over there um thanok however, is going to get whapped. Oh, nope, that's the wrong attack. That is only going to be for six damage. You get nailed four. Okay. And... Oh. Are so, we doing another attack? Yep, next, this, this attack round now. Ooh. 19 is good. Oh. Uh, That's pretty good for Mary Lee. How about Mav? What'd you get? Six. Oh, I didn't realize if that was... Yeah, okay. So Mav won't... You won't get to... Um, Adam, Thanuk, you can roll a d12 for damage. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Mary Lee says, we're going to have to do better. Yes. And yes. then, let's see, who's it going to attack oh. this time? It's going to attack Fanuc again. I could be re-rolling my ones and two damage rolls. Yep. Ryan, uh, you may attempt to attack and interrupt this attack. You will there hit it. it. You will hit it. Roll damage. Nice. Nice. Um, you do not but feel like that was... Swing as well? What? That's swing. Uh, no, you're not going to get your butt swing on this one. Okay. Um, you feel like that was, it did something to it, but it's not what you expected to happen. You watched the portal shimmer, or the, the ward shimmer around it. And she's like, oh dear, gosh dear. Um, we have to stop this before he breaks the shell. So. Yeah, yeah we do. So you did nine points of damage. All right. You guys go ahead and make your Arcana checks. Ten's enough. <laughs> nice. All right, everybody, roll a d12. Ooh, nice. those are nice. Eighteen, twenty-three points of damage total. So you guys have done thirty-five points of damage to the vortex by casting the warding cantrip. And it is going to attack, and it's going to attack Mav. <laughs> Come on, Othig. 
Oh no! Oh, <laughs> nice knowing you guys. Jeez. This is just terrible. Mav yeah, is going to six. take six points of damage. Down he goes. Oh, Jeez. Mav is unconscious. Okay, so can I use my bonus to bring him up with his uh, kit? You could... I would allow you to use your whole turn to use his kit to attempt to stabilize him. Um, which would mean you don't get to block the next attack. But you don't get to bring him up because you you can stabilize him so he doesn't have to make death saving throws. Because you don't have the healer feet. You don't feet. have the healer feet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well. Um, does Mary Lee does have another potion. She would scream to you that it's in her pouch. So you could feed him that other potion. Okay, that's what I want to do. Okay, but you will not be able to protect the other two this next time. Okay. So, I'll let Mav roll his own potion points. Or, Ryan, one of you guys can. There it is. So, three three points. <laughs> Alright, so that's what we did. So, you guys can make your arcana checks this round. Barely. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> yep. Oh my really? gosh. <laughs> really? Oh, you guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, this is not going good. And you, let's see, who's it going to attack this round? Is going to attack Mary Lee. And cannot be blocked. Will it hit her, though? It will hit her. Four. <laughs> Seven points of damage. She's still up. Arcana <laughs> checks, guys. Holy cow. Oh, yes! nat, nat 20. Yes. Nice. Oh, good, 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 good. Very nice. Do I get two D12s? You do get two D12s. That's nice. Oh, I'm good. Jeez, holy cow. <laughs> Ooh, Mary Lee got a 12, so that is a total of 40. Nice. All right. Oh, she's like, oh, that was a that was a good round. Yeah. <laughs> um, Much needed. The portal, the portal looks uh, fairly. It's What's starting there? to shrink. It can actually. Right. We'll make it smaller so you guys feel like you're doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, then let's see who I gotta make my attack, and who's it gonna attack after that round? It is going to attack. No, nope, that's a d4. It is gonna attack Merrily again. Man, gosh, you will hit. You hit it. I did just okay. barely. I, so I you interrupt the, the smack. So roll damage on it. No, I get to re-roll that. I get to re-roll that. Do you, do you want, want to? to? Because we don't want to burst the bubble. Oh, do I want to? Yeah, okay. So, okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, guys. Arcana I checks. Thought I was, thought I was contributing as well. But... No, your, your damage is adding towards something different. Hit yeah. it with the butt. <laughs> don't do it with the big one. Oh, yeah, can I... Uh... No, you like, could be doing that. You, no? you could, good. but not not. You not could really. be using a dagger. Are you kidding me? Holy cow! <laughs> what the heck is all one? Oh. You guys, you guys. <laughs> all right. There's more ones like in this session too. than in our whole last <laughs> campaign. <laughs> well, Marilee's not doing much better, so it is still cooking along here. Um, it's going to make its attack. Oh, Thig, do you want to try and interrupt it? Yeah. Do you have a smaller weapon? Yes. Use that. Yes. You do feel like the reach of your polearm is helping you hit it, though. Oh. That's how you're well, covering those two, is with the reach. But I'm right. I'm right next to him, though. Right, but I, I counted on you having the reach of the polearm to do this job. It's kind of the oh. way the mechanic plays out. All right. Okay. What about a javelin? All right. <laughs> I mean, the javelin's a d6 instead of a d10, so. All right. 
max damage. Shh. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> jerk. You jerk. You jerk. Oh, shoot. <laughs> shoot, you weren't supposed to do that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I forgot that you were. Yeah, hold on. I got to fix its health. There we go. Um, oh, I got to take off the last attack you made, too. Such a freaking train wreck. <laughs> What are you talking about? It's great. It, no, it should have this many no, health left. Okay. It's all your fault if we fail. I all mean, right, I think yeah. at this point, uh, Phil just inherits the the, the company. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Three players the, die instead of one. The ward is now wobbling pretty badly. <laughs> Too many more Wait. smacks and it's going to go down. Oh, jeez. Okay. All right, oh, are... good. Nice. Oh, wow. Yeah! Oh, nice. Very nice. All right. You guys manage to seal the portal before the ward goes down. Somehow. Gosh, finally. And before gonna, we die. Yeah. I was going to not strike anymore, and you guys are just going to have to eat it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's really a really good position to put someone in. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's, it was intended to be very panic inducing. Oh, All right, so the portal closes, the runes on the floor fade, and Marilee kind of sits down on the floor, and she sighs, and she's like, okay, whew, that should do it. 13 Kalki's dead, the goat man's dead, <laughs> the portal's closed, hopefully the gravity's back on upstairs, <laughs> and... She's like, now I just gotta clean this place up before Despina gets home. Uh, maybe we can help you. What about the ooze? Yeah. Oh. Oh, I don't yes. know. Maybe it's gone. I don't know. Well, let's go check. <laughs> um, so she gets up off the floor. You go to check, and the ooze is slid off the tower, and it's moved its way out through the fields and is heading off to the southwest. Yay! Not that's my problem? It's officially <laughs> the silver lining. She's like, no, that's not a silver lining. We've got to take care of that. <laughs> what's what's towards the southwest? An orc camp. Not, she says not much. I mean, if it goes far enough, it'll hit the Order Monastery. But that's, <laughs> yeah, that's 100, not okay. 100, yeah, that's not okay. It's a hundred uh, miles away. That's a long way for that thing to go. There's nothing else in between us and them. I mean, well, is it just gonna die? Like, what's gonna happen to it? I don't know. <laughs> she doesn't can know. We, can we throw some salt at it? Like, can, can we, we yeah. draw it to a salt field? Does she have what anything we... in the tower that would help dispatch it? Um, I know there's a great compost cavern that we could draw it to. <laughs> Just let it in there for the rest of its days. Would be. Um, she says, send it I... down to the Underdark. Yeah. Oh man. She's... Oh man. <laughs> she says, I, I really, I don't know. I mean, I suppose we could start shooting magic at it and lure it back. Um. <laughs> how long does it, how, it back? how long does it take to contact the Weave Guardians? Oh, uh, it's an hour what ritual. They... It's an hour. Yep. She's like, I'm in, and she's looking out at this thing, and it's like eating its way through the hedges. She's like, I am in so much trouble. <laughs> I'm in kind you of a contact your boss. <sighs> yeah. Um. <laughs> We're could've, at the point where you can't not. <laughs> could have been worse. Yeah. I mean. Well, how about this? How about this? We like. Mav should probably take a short rest before we leave anywhere, just in case. Mm -hmm. Um. So while well, why am I taking a short rest? Because you have three hit points left. Roll some hit dice. I don't have, have any hit dice. Oh, you can't use hit dice. I have used them already. Oh, you use them for. Oh. Okay. Yeah, he uses his hit dice to do his job. Oh. Okay. Oh, holy cow! Yeah, man. So, high risk, high reward. I'm curious. So you wow, only okay. have a total of 12 hit points? Or did that go down but somewhere? It, it goes down as I absorb stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, Dang. When uh, I don't have a pool to... When I don't have expended spell 
So when I shoot off a spell, I open up my spell slot. If I absorb a spell into that slot, I have to use basically a hit dice. So I get a couple of free ones based on my charisma. If I don't have a free spell slot, I can still absorb it, but I take a decrease in HP, and I have to send off that spell, all those spells, by the end of my next turn, or I explode the. Yeah. So not only do I decrease in HP, I explode and take damage. Mm -hmm. Who came up with this mess? <laughs> Andy and I did. I came up oh with the basis of it, and then he ran all the numbers and actually crafted out the class to make sure it was feasible. But yeah. yeah. That's crazy. I ran a whole campaign awesome. where, where Bastions were kind of at the core of it. Nice. Um, okay. Well, let's take a rest in either way, um, and I will contact the Leaf Guardians. Sure. Uh, and see... Because I can't imagine that they'd want this thing just going. <laughs> Gallivanting <laughs> around the sands? Yeah. Um, but I also oh, don't think we are really equipped to take care of this. Is she, yeah. <laughs> Marilee says, no, no, we're not. Uh, Marilee needs a contact. What's her name? Despina. Despina. Despina? Yep. Yeah. So you guys, you turn around from the doorway to go back into the tower, and in the doorway is a creature. Let me just pop it up where... Um, let me do something here. I'll zoom in a little bit on the map for you. And I will show you what it, it looks like. Just so you, you have a good good idea of what what's happening here. It is a small, uh, purple-skinned, rather vile-looking being, to be honest. Um, it has extraordinarily long fingertips through which ink leaks out of. And it is currently scribbling on a scroll and it's not really paying you a lot of attention it's kind of just sitting there doing its thing um and as you turn around and bump into it i mean we could actually go to the actual gateway of the tower but unless you get want to pick a fight with this thing you don't have to but we'll see we might end up there um let's see There's a hunched figure standing in the center of the hallway. It's writing on a very long scroll with elongated fingernails that it's using much like an ink pen. It never bothers to look up at you, but it asks, Why have you summoned me? And continues writing. We summoned you? Well, we didn't. The, the Kelkis did. Ah, Kelkis. Mm. Well, I am a scriptorian. I chronicled the weave. When the door opened and closed, I was sent to record the events. I was pulled through to the prime, and I assumed you summoned me here in response to some dire event that needed recording. That assumption is... incorrect? Um, currently incorrect, possibly not incorrect for law. I see. Elaborate. And it still hasn't looked at you. It's like just uh, writing away on its scroll. Have you ever seen a lion escape and get into the petting zoo? I <laughs> don't know if I follow. It, it actually rewinds its scroll and it's like I have never personally witnessed this event. <laughs> I'm just going to point at the mana ooze as it slowly creeps on through everything. You point, and it never looks up or looks at you, but it shifts like it's aware of what you're doing. And it you it doesn't say anything, but you hear a... <gasps> <laughs> and it continues to write. I assume that that creature's existence on the material plane is your doing? No. no, actually, it's not. Kalkis. <laughs> I don't know who's doing it is. I see. Does, uh, does, uh, Marilee have anything to add to this? Um, do, do you want her to add anything to this? <laughs> I mean, if... 
<laughs> if she has any information that this guy might want. Who opened the door? <laughs> I, I would just look at Marilee. <laughs> yeah, but she said she didn't, didn't she? She said nobody was actually practicing teleport or portal magic, right? She did say that. Was she lying to us? You don't know. <laughs> it, Mav determined that she was not being completely forthright. Um, but she wouldn't tell us more. She yeah. does say when it asks that question that the portal opened when she was experimenting with tapping the weave as a power source. And it continues to write and says, I see. Who is responsible for closing it? That's really honest. So I believe what she four says. Of us. Yeah, that seemed pretty honest. I'd say the four of us. It, lo it looks up at, for the first time at you and says, and looks at Othig and says, uninitiated. Then it looks at Mav, spell eater. Divine Orientation. Then it looks at Thanek. Weave, Guardian. You should know better. And then it looks at Marilee and says, Wizard. And it, it pulls two of its fingers out like it's dipping them in an ink pot and it points at Thanek and, and Marilee and a gout of ink shoots out at them. And make dexterity saving throws. Nope. No. <laughs> You've just been disrespected by ink. I know. So the ink hits both of you like square in the face. And it slides around on your face almost like it's animated of itself. And it settles over your eye and it forms an arcane sigil. A sigil. And it flashes for a moment and then fades. And you can, if you look, you can see it, but it's not very pronounced. And it says, you've been stamped for improper use of the weave. You will receive a summons in the future, at which time you can present your case. Do not attempt to avoid your appearance in the court. And then there's a puff of smoke and it's gone. And then you watch out in the distance as the sky splits and you can see the astral plane and a vacuum <laughs> begins to suck this mana I ooze just got teleported out. up into it and it pulls this thing off the ground and you can see it's trying to like cling to the earth and it can't and it just gets sucked into the void and then the portal closes and you four yes! are standing there. Well, this was probably the, wow, this is, this is what a ride. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna look at Panic and be. Like, <laughs> I'm just gonna grab her by her collar. What did you get me wrapped up into? I don't know. I really don't know. I was, I was experimenting with the weave, trying to find a way to quickly restore my spell power when the portal opened. I didn't intend for it to happen. It just happened. I contained it and we closed it. I thought we did the right thing. Does Despina know that you were doing this? <laughs> she okay. just gets so real here's the quiet. This. If you felt the need to hide this from her, then you knew you were doing something. And then you hid it from us. Well, not really. I told you what happened. And I, and I was as honest with you as I could be. The only person that I've tried not to tell anything to is Despina. And then you hear, try not to tell me what. <laughs> yes, retribution. <laughs> and there is a very tall, elegant human woman standing in that main entryway to the tower. Um, the, the circular one near the, near the stairwell. And Marilee turns around and looks and she's just like, oh. And... And this woman, Despina, says, You'll have to excuse me and my apprentice. We have things to discuss. And she waves her hand, and you three are pushed out the door, and it closes. Uh, 
contract. Yeah. We, can, we can settle that another day. Yeah. Oath, is, Oath is walking home. <laughs> he just doesn't want anything to do with this anymore. This was too much for him. <laughs> Mav is going to join him. Yeah, beers are on Othic. He just wants to get to the bar. <laughs> like, a lot. <laughs> Alright, so you guys begin walking home. You you take the switchback stairs back down. Now that you know where they are, they're not real hard to find. You get back out onto the road. You start walking north. Anything you want to do or talk about? Othic doesn't oh. want to talk about anything. <laughs> Oh, I love it. So you guys get back to the bar, and the others aren't back from their mission yet. And you saddle up to the bar, and Othig starts drinking. I think on the way back, the only thing Othig would say is uh, probably look at Thanok and say something like, you're in a heap of trouble. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> yeah, it's time for beers. Yeah. Anything oh, else? Actually, what, oh, uh, what time? Yeah. Of the, what time of the day is it? What time of the day is it? Uh, it would be, it would be pretty late in the evening by the time you guys get back. Okay, so, so we're not going out again right away. No, it it would be it would be close to like nine or ten o'clock at night. Okay. I finally found the animation <laughs> I was looking for. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would uh, have uh, just down a beer mm -hmm. and then and then go upstairs and contact the Weave Guardians. Okay. You contact uh, oh. the Weave Guardians. Mav. Mav's going to go to sleep. <laughs> Mav's going to go to sleep. He's going to need a few more days rest. Oh, I think no, gonna he's not exhausted. He just beat up pretty badly. Yeah. It was, it was having like two beers and turn it. It was a rough go. You guys really missed Phil. <laughs> <laughs> so you're... Uh, Thanik, you contact the Weave Guardians and, and uh Oh, what's your what's your NPC's name? What's his name? Uh, uh starts with an M. Morden uh, Morden's uh Morland. Morland. Morland appears and he's like, Yes, Thanok. Oh no. How did you get that? <laughs> oh, he sees it right away. He sees it right away. He's like, That's right. that's terrible yeah um <laughs> i'll just i'll just tell them what we did that we got we we got a contract from um a local mage apprentice a local wizard's apprentice and uh when we got there there was a mana ooze all over the tower and a what a mana ooze oh and, oh no oh yeah. tell me oh, it's, it's, it's it's no it's loose it's loose it's just, it's just going southwest from here. No, it got sucked it's, into the astral it's, plane. It's oh, it did. It did. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I missed that. <laughs> you're like all you're like casual and telling him, like, no, it's fine. It's loose. No, it's not. Like, I mean, <laughs> like, don't worry. Totally it off the like, no, dude, it's cool. It's cool. It's loose now. It's in the wild. <laughs> we, we set it free. We set it free. We set it free. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you explain the whole thing to him, and he's like, I, I'm going to need... To have you meet me, um, head for for uh, head for our compound. Okay. Um, so, yeah, and that that's the end of the communication. Right. Is that something he has to do by himself, or would he tell us, or would would we be able to go with him? Because I feel like Othic would definitely go with him. If well, we to, like, you could him. go with him, but then you can't play next week when he's gone. Yeah. That's. Oh yeah. That's that's his story out for the next two weeks while you guys are off doing stuff. Got it. So Got it. Yeah. I had to so, come up, I had to come up with a way to get him out and the vile scriptorian was not originally part of this adventure. But when I was like, How am I gonna get Othig out of this? I went I was flipping through monsters and I went, Oh, this guy <laughs> <laughs> This guy right here is gonna make an appearance. Good. Great. So I will just let everybody know that I will be taking taking a trip to settle this all right 
So, um, let's see. The next morning, as you start putting your stuff together, getting ready for your trip, uh, you guys are all down in the tavern the next morning. The other group still hasn't returned. And in walks a short, darker-skinned, curly-haired dwarf who um, looks at you all and says, Hey, uh, you got any job openings? Wait, who is this? It's, is it our wizard friend? It's Merrily. Oh. She's like, I, uh, oh. I kind of got fired. I would hand her the contract. Oh, she's like, oh, I do owe you this. And she slides the scroll over to you. And accept it and say that I would be fine with you working with us. Just no portal magic. I, I didn't try. I really, I wasn't trying to do that. She's gonna, she's gonna beat that phrase until the day she dies. <laughs> have I, have I already left, or is this still in the morning? This, you would be getting breakfast and getting ready to leave in the morning. Can, can she come with me? She could come with you. I will, I will tell her that, that she needs to come with me. Yeah, that's her, it's her first job with us. Condition yeah. of employment. Okay. Of employment. Where are we going? We're going to meet the Weave Guardians. Oh. And you can help you can help explain. What oh. Happened. All right. You know Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's like I, I am really going to stick to the whole it was an accident thing because I don't I, That's fine. That's fine that it was an accident, but that doesn't absolve you. Right, but you're going to let them know that I I yeah, I'm not dangerous, well, right? You're, you're going to let him know. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> She's very nervous. So, let's see. What else happens today? Um, so, as Stanek and Mary Lee are leaving, in walks a rather rotund Skog. And a really ripped, long-bearded-looking Rocky. And they're like, hey! And they point over at Othig. And <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, you got the beer? <laughs> yeah, of course you got the beer. And they come running in, and they begin to regale you with tales of their last years of adventure with the military. Good. And so they, they've shown back up now as well nice. and I think Excellent. that's the end of the night then Jeez. a little earlier than normal <clears throat> but no, that's good. I actually I didn't expect you guys to wipe out my calkies that fast that whole explosion oh. that, that took them out was I thought it was taking us forever <laughs> no you did it you did it quicker I had two more rituals they were going to get off before goat man, oh my God. I was I was gonna fill the fill the place with hallucinations and false doors and <laughs> I thought we were like failing, which is why like we kept moving from room to room. I was like, I feel like we're not doing it. No, that was it, sure. the point to get you to move to room to room, but well, know. yeah, I know that, but I thought like I don't know, I just thought it was no, no. I thought it was not going well. No, I thought was... nothing about this went well. <laughs> It went better than it could have if that helps you feel no, no, better no. about the night. I, yeah, I mean, I guess, but the rolls were like, ooh. <laughs> the other yeah. one, the rolls weren't so good, but the uh, well, they were bad. The self-sacrificing bastion explosion did did some wonders there. Would a fourteen instead of the twelve cause any of those other ones to fail or save? Do you remember? Yes, it would have. Yeah. It was 12 plus the spell level, or the number of oh. spells. Yeah, I think so it, it would have pushed, it would have pushed, one of them had an, had an 11 plus one, so that's, he made sure. it save by one. And so, yeah, it would have, would have killed that other one. Oh, oh then well. you might not have gotten, he wouldn't have been in the room downstairs then. No, it would have been. You would have got around to try and kill him before Goatman showed up. Oh, yeah. All right. Cool. I'm going to go eat. All right. Have a good night, guys. Enjoy. Good night, guys. Good night. See you later.